Now in section 4.4 we will discuss the linear dielectrics and we will be focusing on permittivity of free space or the permittivity in a medium and then the electric susceptibility and dielectric constants. So these are all related terms and we will explain them. When electric field enters into a material, then the material responds to that electric field. We will consider a regime where the electric field and the polarizations are linear to each other. And such material we will call is linear dielectrics. Because there can be uh, other materials like nonlinear dielectrics, there uh, we have the material like uh, uh, isotropic, linear isotropic material. We are having an isotropic material like crystals and uh, some materials, uh, non-linear materials, for example, the ferroelectrics and the uh, anisotropic material like crystals in which the uh, tensors, tensor is involved as we have discussed in the previous lecture. So we will discuss all those things uh, here uh, and this one. So for linear dielectrics we are having the relation and the relation is that P, the polarization or the polarization density is equal to epsilon naught chi e and e where epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space we already know this thing this is basically the permission to the electric field lines by the electric field and we know that to the electric field this permission is inversely proportional because the more the permission the more will be the opposition to the electric field and this is the uh, means the polarization in the material or the electric field which is due to the polarization of the material is inversely proportional to the external electric field. Chi E, it has the, some dimensions while Chi E we call, this is Chi and E for the electric this is the electric susceptibility means it gives the degree of being polarized means how quickly a material can be polarized how much the material is vulnerable to polarization how easily the material can be polarized this is the measure of that thing it's a dimensionless number it's a ratio and we will uh, discuss this in a while that the P, the polarization is basically proportional to the electric field like P is proportional to the electric field and when it is equal to this one so P is equal to a constant in the electric field while the constant term is basically the epsilon naught and chi e the electric susceptibility so the higher the electric susceptibility the easier will be the material to get polarized so this is uh, this is one of the feature means how quickly the material can be polarized or how easily the material can be polarized the measure is given by the electric susceptibility means its vulnerability to the external electric field so the such material such material we call the linear dielectrics when it will come to the non-linear dielectrics then the P is equal to epsilon naught chi e e this is the linear term and then there are non-linear terms like chi e and this is squared in E is squared plus epsilon naught chi E and cube and E cube and so on. This is called the second order 
non-linear and this is called the third order non-linear uh, response and due to uh, the symmetry reason this thing is not that prominent in the most of the materials while the third order non-linear dielectric materials are abundant and this response is observed in most of the material and uh, research is basically either in on linear dielectrics or third order non-linear dielectrics are under uh, the studies so this now we are having the relation and the relation is that d the electric displacement is equal to epsilon naught e plus p so for the polarization density which is the dipole moment per unit volume i can now write epsilon naught e and for p i can write epsilon naught chi e and e if i take e is common epsilon naught here is common then 1 plus chi e and e here and this thing epsilon naught and this i can write that d is equal to epsilon e where epsilon is equal to epsilon naught 1 plus chi e and then I can write that epsilon over epsilon naught it is defined is the relative permittivity or the dielectric constant we call it the dielectric constant and this is equal to 1 plus chi e different materials they are tabulated in table 4.2 like uh, the vacuum having a dielectric constant of 1 means vacuum is having chi equal to 0 is there is no material to polarize so this is equal to 1 and then helium neon and hydrogen the chi is having its values and then different values are being tabulated at a standard pressure in a standard temperature because they are playing the role uh, in the material so we uh, write that this uh, relative permittivity or the dielectric constant of a material is one of the very familiar property of a material so uh, this chi e the dependence of this chi e it will basically uh, depend what kind of material we are having like if for example we are having a linear isotropic material isotropic material then for linear isotropic material like for example we uh, are having glass or water for example then for these materials we are having chi e is a scalar constant so this is um, scalar constant there then we may have a non-linear material non-linear which are not having a linear response to the electric field the external field that we apply so non-linear materials non-linear materials include for example ferroelectric materials then for the ferroelectric materials we are having chi e dependence on e so e different powers will be engaged there like e2 or e3 and so on and if we are having an n isotropic material n isotropic like in all direction it is not the same like a crystal then for anisotropic materials we uh, already discussed that like crystals this expression of 
this linear expression of pi comes out to be epsilon chi e and e here so we have this thing equal to epsilon naught and the chi e will come with indices i j p with i and e with j so different directions will have different kind of polarization and this expression will change uh, to that one so electric susceptibility uh, in permittivity permittivity basically how many uh, how many field lines are permitted to enter into the material and then electric susceptibility how much those lines are able to polarize that material so this is the electric susceptibility and the dielectric constant the dielectric constant is basically one plus chi e or it is the relative permittivity means compared to the vacuum the ratio of this thing with the vacuum or free space is the dielectric constant of that material so we will uh, have to remain inside the linear regime of the dielectric and here in this chapter we basically discuss only the linear dielectrics and not the non-linear dielectrics. Now we saw example 4.5. Let me read the statement of example 4.5. This basically says a metal sphere of radius A carries a charge Q. It is surrounded out to radius B by a linear dielectric material of permittivity epsilon. Find the potential at the center relative to infinity. At the center of the sphere, basically, we are going to find out the potential and it is relative to infinity. So, if this is a metal sphere and the metal sphere is of radius A and we, it is uh, surrounded by a dielectric material, this is a dielectric material which has surrounded this metal sphere and this metal, this uh, dielectric material from here it extends to radius B and there is a charge Q on this so it's 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 a solid sphere it's a solid sphere and it is having a charge of Q and we are going to find out the potential at the center of this sphere and from infinity we are going to find out uh, relative to infinity we are going out to find the potential now here is something that uh, in order to find out the potential uh, we we know minus from infinity to some point r for example and this is e dot dl so it means in order to find out the potential we need to find out the electric field first in order to find out this potential and in order to find out the electric field we need to find out the bound charges, the bound charges can be volume bound charge and surface bound charge. But to find out the bound charge, we need to find out the polarization because we know that uh, D is equal to epsilon naught E plus P. So unless we know P, we cannot calculate E. So this is a kind of dilemma that how we will proceed. But as we are given that the material, which is this material, it is having a 
permittivity of epsilon so from here we can go and we can use the uh, Gauss's law uh, to find out d of the metal sphere so charges on this one in is it's a, a metallic so they, those charges are dealt is free charges they are easy uh, to move around the sphere so we can use Gauss's law in order to find out this thing we are having a spherical symmetry d dot d a then on a closed surface so it's a surface integral this is equal to free charge how much free charge is here so this charge is equal to q and d dot da is d is uniform around this we don't need to integrate this one so it is uh, means their angle is the same angle is zero between d and this it's out uh, outer from the sphere so only da we will calculate and this will come out to be 4 pi and r squared the radius of the sphere so in this case we are having a but i will write the generalized expression here and d is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon r squared so let me write q over 4 pi epsilon and r squared in r unit vector this will come out to be the electric displacement and we know one relation that d is equal to epsilon e where epsilon is the uh, permittivity of the medium so from this i can write here okay here we will not have this one because 4 pi 4 pi r square so q over 4 pi r square this and now when we will write the electric field then this epsilon will come here 